What is a JRPG? Simply put, it stands for Japanese role-playing game, but that doesn't really encompass its original meaning. See, back in the early 2000s, visuals were making huge leaps, voice acting was becoming more common, and genres started developing their own unique flair. Two of the most popular RPGs at the time were Final Fantasy X and Knights of the Old Republic. While they're both still technically RPGs, their visual style, storytelling, and game design couldn't be more different. So fans started coming up with their own terms to differentiate them. WRPG stood for RPGs developed in the West, and JRPG was for RPGs developed in Japan. For a time, these terms worked really well as each region had a distinct flair and there weren't nearly as many games released like there are today to muddy the waters. However, as technology evolved over time and lowered the barrier to entry for creating games, developers wanted to make games inspired by their favorites. So you had Western developers making RPGs inspired by Japan and vice versa. So the term JRPG doesn't really mean the same thing today as it did back in 2000. Reducing it down to the country it was made in doesn't really tell the full story. JRPGs now are more of a style of RPG, but what exactly is that style? What does it mean to be a JRPG versus a Western RPG versus even a CRPG? Well, I've thought about this a lot and I've broken it down into five distinct categories. And I believe if a game can meet the majority of these criteria, it can be considered a JRPG. First, let's begin with visual style. Of the five categories, I feel like this one is probably the easiest to identify when it comes to JRPGs. With rare exception, there's really only two styles that come to mind. The first would be an anime or manga inspired style, and the other would be pixel art. I don't know about you, but when I think of JRPGs in my mind's eye, the first ones that come to mind are like Persona 5, Dragon Quest, and Kingdom Hearts 3. They have very distinct stylized looks that are all inspired by anime and manga in some way. In fact, Dragon Quest, widely considered to be the grandfather of JRPGs, had its characters designed and drawn by Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball. At this point, it's kind of become a tradition to have anime or manga character designers work on JRPGs. And we can't forget pixel art, as that's where the genre originated. I don't think there's any particular style within pixel art per se, but I just couldn't ignore that. Now at the beginning of this section, I did say with rare exception because I believe there are some games that most people would consider JRPGs that go for a more photorealistic look. Probably most famously would be Final Fantasy VII Remake. While the characters are in a more photorealistic style, the game still takes a lot of inspiration from anime. Characters' eyes in particular are really stylized. Also, the animation. There's a lot of exaggerated movement and physics in that game that just aren't possible in the real world, but would fit right in with an anime. I think the Yakuza games are also another good example of what I'm talking about here. Generally speaking, games with a photorealistic style don't typically fit in with JRPGs. Now let's move on to storytelling. Now here's where I think the biggest differences between Western RPGs and JRPGs starts to emerge. Storytelling in Western RPGs typically revolve around choice, including how your character looks, but not always. Dialogue options are also very common in Western RPGs, often changing the story in drastic ways. Western RPGs want you to have the freedom to tell and shape your own story. They don't want to tell you a singular one. Games like Skyrim, Fallout, and Mass Effect come to mind. JRPGs, on the other hand, put you in the shoes of an already created protagonist and tell a very specific design story. Now that's not to say character creators don't exist in JRPGs because they certainly do. I mean, just look at Pokemon, the biggest JRPG franchise. They've been leaning into designing your own character pretty hard in the last few releases. But for the vast majority of JRPGs, they tell a very specific story from one character's point of view. There are some choices that can be made, but generally speaking, that's not how JRPGs like to tell their stories. Some common story tropes typically involve saving the world from a great evil, killing God, collecting magical MacGuffins, and my personal favorite, the power of friendship. Obviously not every JRPG has to have these story elements, but if you think about the popular ones, they probably include one if not all of these tropes. Next, let's move on to game structure. Traditionally, JRPGs are pretty linear. Sure, they can give you the illusion of being more open than they really are, especially when you unlock the airship or a boat, but at the end of the day, there's usually a set path that you need to travel down to progress the story. Back in the day, JRPG structures were almost always some iteration of this. You would start in a town, absorb some kind of story, go to a dungeon, fight a boss, report back to the town, and then move on to the next one. Usually there would be some kind of world map you would travel through connecting towns, usually represented by structures way smaller than the size of the actual town itself. Now there still are some JRPGs that use this design today, Nino Kuni 2 comes to mind, but for the most part, games have innovated in some way. The innovation I see most is something I'll call wide linear. You basically have a single linear path from one town to the next, with some areas off to the side to explore. Instead of a world map with disproportional dimensions, 
characters, enemies, and the environments are all the same size as they would be in the towns or dungeons. Now the best example that I can think of for this would be Dragon Quest XI. Sure, you do have some offshoots where you can explore, but for the most part, there's one path to your next destination. Now I say wide linear because you have a pure linear structure with something like Final Fantasy XIII. There's basically zero room for exploration there. Most Western RPGs these days are open world where you can explore in any direction and get lost for hours. Sometimes you can even experience the story in a different order depending on the side content you engage with. I can probably count on like one hand the number of JRPGs that have some kind of open world structure, namely the Xenoblade games. Even something like Final Fantasy XV, which is technically open world, is super linear. I mean, you're literally following a road with your car for most of the game. Now here's one subgenre that kind of gets a pass with the JRPG community, and that's strategy RPGs. These are typically mission-based instead of one seamless experience. You're placed in a map, need to complete an objective, and then you move on. This can range from grid-based combat in something like Fire Emblem, or a little bit more free-flowing like Valkyria Chronicles. There's almost never exploration, although there are always exceptions like Triangle Strategy or Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. Generally speaking, I think games that have a mission-based structure wouldn't qualify as JRPGs, but because they tick the boxes of the other four criteria in this video, they kind of get a pass. Next, let's talk about mechanics. To begin, let's talk about combat. Now, when most people think of JRPGs, they probably think of turn-based combat. And for decades, that was the most common combat system as earlier gaming consoles were limited with what they could do. A lot of JRPGs still utilize turn-based combat today, like Pokemon, Dragon Quest, and Persona. But I don't think JRPGs are strictly limited to turn-based combat. I mean, look at the Tales series, for example. Structure-wise, it plays like any other JRPG you could imagine, but its combat is action. Even going back to the very first entry on Super Famicom, Tales of Fantasia. It was obviously much more rudimentary back then, resembling a 2D fighting game like Street Fighter. And the decades since, it's evolved into something much more dynamic. And for whatever this is worth, Bandai Namco themselves still refer to the Tales series as a JRPG franchise to this day. So for combat, they can either be turn-based, which would include strategy RPGs, or be action-oriented. This would exclude any type of pure shooter mechanics like you would find in Call of Duty or Gears of War. And while you technically shoot in games like Valkyria Chronicles and as Barrett in the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I wouldn't exactly describe those as shooters. They're more command or ability-based. Another core part of JRPG mechanics is leveling up and making your character stronger. This typically revolves around gaining experience points in battle that ultimately lead to characters leveling up and increasing stat points. Pretty much every JRPG has some kind of system like this. Now it may not be as one-to-one -one as gaining experience points, but maybe earning skill points and then placing them into some kind of grid that would level up a character. Basically any kind of experience system that makes your character's combat statistics go up. JRPGs also usually include unlocking new skills and abilities as well. Again, this can be as simple as acquiring them from level ups, or something like learning abilities after you have a piece of gear equipped for a period of time. Also common to JRPGs is upgrading your equipment. Almost every time you reach a new town, you have to hit up the item shop and see what new weapons and armor are available. Some JRPGs also let you craft your equipment, but that's not necessarily a strict criteria. One type of character improvement that JRPGs don't typically have and is often reserved for Western RPGs are more social abilities like charisma, charm, and things like that. Because JRPGs aren't really about influencing the story how you want, there really isn't a need for these types of mechanics. Although there is one exception to the rule, and that would be Persona. You have an entire skill grid that is vital for social link interactions. If your charm isn't high enough, for example, you can't hang out with a certain female character, or if your knowledge is too low, you'll do poorly on your exams. Again, this is a rare, rare exception that almost no other JRPG has. And for the final criteria, I came up with something that's a little bit more nebulous, but I think will make sense for any longtime JRPG fan, and that is vibe. Now, what the heck do I mean by that? JRPGs have a certain indistinguishable vibe to them. For example, the childlike wonder of setting off on your first adventure. I think Pokemon does an amazing job of this. Every game starts with you leaving your home and picking your first Pokemon, and there's always something fun about that. You get to pick your friend that you're gonna go through this entire journey through this world with, and you can't help but build a bond with them. I mean, why do you think Pokemon merch is so popular? It's not just about cute designs, but it's your friend that you went on this amazing adventure with. When I think of the most prototypical JRPG of all time, the one that comes to my mind is Lunar Silver Star Story. You're just a kid from a little village who plays the ocarina, but one day you and your childhood friends wanna go on this innocent trip to a local cave 
and end up embarking on this amazing globetrotting adventure. To me, JRPGs have this almost indistinguishable charm to them that's hard to define in specifics, but you just feel it when you're playing. And it's that charm that made me fall in love with the genre so many years ago, and why I'm still making content about them today. So let's take these five criteria and try to summarize them. A JRPG is a game with an anime-inspired or pixel art style. It's typically a game where you play as a set character going through a specific linear journey, oftentimes including story elements like saving the world from an evil force, collecting MacGuffins, and the power of friendship. The structure is typically linear, moving through one connected world with some opportunities to go off the beaten path, occasionally level or mission-based. It includes turn-based or action combat with leveling systems that improve your character's statistics in combat, but not socially, with rare exceptions. It has a certain charming quality that you know when you see it and does not necessarily have to be made in Japan if it meets enough of the above criteria. As someone that's been playing JRPGs for nearly 30 years, I know I'm getting old, that's what I came up with, but what are your thoughts? Drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. I'll also be starting up a series doing deep dives on specific franchises and trying to determine if they really are JRPGs like Dark Souls, Yakuza, and Zelda. So if that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.